hello? We'll do it live. I ain't got no band, I don't need to practice. Fuck it, thing. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. Do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. So we're going to get all this legal stuff cleared up because I done told you the law is on my side here. Fuck it. Fucking thing sucks. We'll do it live. All right, episode 22 of the We'll Do It Live Fuck It podcast with G-Virus. And I am Martine, but if you have to ask me, I'm Vorlox. I thought you'd be a cat in the window this time. (laughs) I really did. Oh man, I missed the boat. I should have been a cat in the window. Should we cut that and redo that in post and you start it over? I mean, that would defeat the whole purpose of us doing it live, wouldn't it? No, 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 no. I'll live with my regrets. Okay, Martine. (laughs) Didn't you tell me people had started calling you that? My wife. My wife. (laughs) So that's interesting because people that have listened to the record probably wouldn't necessarily know that you were the inspiration for Vorlox the Count. Oh, my God. She called me Martine. My understanding is she For weeks. Yeah. (laughs) Well, every time I put my jacket on, she goes, okay, Martine, you ready to go? (laughs) First time she did it to me, I go, well, What? She's like, Vorlox, you know? I was like, oh my God. She asked me permission the other day to call you and say, uh, this is Tony Pace. And I was like, just do it. He'll get a kick out of it. Just call him. I don't know why you would need permission. She she hated it. Like, she liked it, but hated it. We couldn't make it to the end of that call. Every time you would say, this "This is Tony Tony Pace. Pace, she would just get angrier and angrier. She's like, I'd already hung up with him. Why are these people still talking to him? It's obvious that he's... And then you would say, this is Tony Pace, stop playing on the phone. She would just get madder and madder. I don't understand why and the guy was all, mad he, at The that. guy pretended to be a 911 operator. <laughs> 911, what's your emergency? 911, what's your emergency, sir? 911, okay, sir, this isn't an emergency. Like, really? So how would I accidentally misdial 911? I was trying to dial 918, and I fucked up. <laughs> I got in a hurry, and I dialed 911. Whoops. Well, my favorite one was like, you got the wrong number. No, I got the right number. You're on. Stop playing on the phone. This is Tony Pace. <laughs> this is Tony Pace. You called me. <laughs> yeah, that was a reference to that. That's an inside joke. Nobody will get but you. <laughs> you called me. It doesn't oh, matter man. if you're the only one getting the inside jokes because you're probably the only one listening. So. Well, ninety percent of your jokes are inside jokes only for you. Is it I mean, only ninety percent? I thought it would have been higher. Uh, <laughs> that's how I have described your humor in the past when people try. I just don't get it, and I'm like, you have to understand yeah. that most of the jokes he tells are inside jokes just for him and that only he gets, and that you're okay with that. I am okay with that, but I'm not. I'm not quite sure if I figured out if you find it funnier. The actual joke funnier than the fact that nobody else around you gets the joke. Which one's more funny, the fact that nobody else gets it and their reaction, or the joke itself? I think it's neither, really, because it's more just me just caring about entertaining myself on that. So it's like a comic masturbation, if you will. (laughs) I never got the cringe comedy. Like, you love the cringe comedy stuff. Yeah. But is it the actual joke and the cringe... Or is it the fact that other people, you know other people watching it either don't get it and they feel weird and that's what's funny. So going back to the early stages of the internet, (laughs) let's go back to the old days of the internet there when things like AIM existed. We're talking pre-social media. There's no MySpace. There's none of that. There's message boards. Remember those? Right. Yes, yes. Now, my understanding is, I think message boards are still around in some capacity, but not the way they were. And they've basically consolidated into Reddit. Everybody you got just it. goes to Reddit. That's, what, that's what's up now. So, back in the days of message boards, I used to really enjoy trolling message boards. And so, I would get a gang of trolls. Mm-hmm. And we would go through and just flood message boards and terrorize them, which was funny to me and to them. Nobody else found it funny. Because they want to read their thread or whatever right, that I'm they here made. For and, serious reasons. Yeah. I want to know about Metalhead or whatever. Yeah. You know. Now there's a whole list of people just saying dumb shit in this thing <laughs> or whatever. Well, I decided to get back to my roots the other day. Oh, okay. So it's no secret that I watch professional wrestling. 
and I watch all elite wrestling, and I like watching AEW. And I also noticed that good old JR, Jim Ross, the barbecue sauce fella, <laughs> he's probably more known barbecue for something sauce. else, probably his commentary I on didn't wrestling. I did know that he made barbecue sauce. He does. His, oh. I think his like Twitter handle or something's like JR's barbecue sauce or something like that. Well, the more you know. Yeah. Jim Ross, he may be getting a little up there in the age, and so he's starting to mispronounce names, you moves. Sure it's, you sure it's not the stroke that he had? He had Bell's palsy, friend, not a oh, stroke, oh. by the way. Well, now I feel like an ass. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> way to make fun of a guy with Bell's palsy there, Johnny Four Collins. Is that, is that a little, you got a little <laughs> Cheeto dust on your face there. Yeah, that happened. In fact, I'll tell. I'll do that story after I finish this, if you want. <laughs> the Cheeto Yeah, party. sure, story time. We ain't had it in a while. Jim Ross keeps mispronouncing names. Okay. And so he'll be, if like Maxwell Jacob Friedman is in the ring... Most people just call him MJF, but they'd say Maxwell Jacob Friedman. JR's on Dynamite one night, and he's like, Matthew Joseph Friedman in the ring, real barn burner over there. All right, Tony, what a barn burner. It's Matthew Joseph Friedman here in AWE. He's going to, and, and he's just mispronouncing the name of the company, the fucking wrestlers, the moves, everything. He's And he doesn't do it all the time, but I've done JR botch counters. Where me and a friend of mine that watches it will text one another, and I'll be like, JR botch. You know, I'll be like, number one, number two, number three. And so I'll do these JR botch counters. Well, I may or may not have created a troll account for good old JR, <laughs> and may or may not be responsible for that account going on AEW's YouTube page. Oh and every God. time they post like a match or something, yeah. or highlights or whatever having good old JR deliberately botch the names. And the point of this is you bring up people not getting the joke. Yeah. Well, there's people that come on there and try to correct it. They're like, no, 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 their name isn't. This is their name. Right. But some people are getting it, and it's funny because people will um, like post some things like, am I the only one in this um, comment section getting what you're doing here, pal? <laughs> And, and I'll be like, you may be, pal. And, like, and, and I'll quote things that Jim Ross would say, but then I took it a step further. So people that would post highlights, they're not authorized to post. You know, they've just streamed it, right, recorded it with fraps or whatever, and and put it on their um, their YouTube page. Most of them don't have a lot of views, but I'll go on there and post as Jr. and I'll be like, you're going to be hearing from our attorneys, pal. Tommy Khan and Kenny Alpaca are going to be suing you, which is Tony Khan and Kenny Omega, you know, and I'll be saying stuff like that. And there was some guy live streaming a video game, like a wrestling game that he'd modded for AEW wrestlers. Hmm. And I just happened to find it because I was just searching for recent AEW stuff to go post on. And so he's live streaming him playing this video game. And so I went into the live chat and started calling the match as JR, but yeah, deliberately holy. botching the shit. <laughs> Oh, my yeah. God. Oh, as God is my witness, he is broken in half. You know, just doing all this he's, Jim Ross shit. He's 68. Yeah. I mean, it's not 99. No, he's not, but he's going to call matches until he's 109, I but think. But let's go back to, you didn't really answer the question, is it the joke that you find funny or the fact that other people well, don't was, get it? I was getting to that. I found them equally as funny that people, it was sailing over people's heads gotcha. and people were genuinely trying to correct me and be helpful. No, you don't understand. That person's name isn't what you're saying. It, his name is not Freddy Kazarian. It's Frankie Kazarian, I swear to you. Yeah, so that's just as funny to see them get frustrated about that. Well, see, I I think that I find more humor in the that nobody else gets it because I can stand behind that because some of the some of the stuff I'm just like I don't know why this is funny, especially when it's the because I word. said it. Yeah, because you said it. There's yeah. but you have some zingers that will get me, but it's the Buzzing. when I take a step back and see the world that is witnessing this joke or whatever it is that you're doing and not getting it that's funny to me way more funny than whatever it is that you're doing but when it's the like actual like cringeworthy stuff that's on tv or whatever well, i can't think of any of that stuff what um like uh, what's on tv you the, can't think the, of what's uh, yeah, on the tv yeah 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 like the adult swim stuff oh. that was that used to be two, good used early 2000s yeah. and I, then they found rick and morty and they yeah they were I, able to get some viewership again. i couldn't i couldn't get behind it because 
it's, especially at that time, I didn't get it. But I didn't. You find the didn't like funny. Tom goes to the mayor, did you? I didn't like Tom goes to the mayor. Loved it. I didn't like anything that they they did at all. Even the content. bear traps gig. You sent me that. That was kind of funny, but I kind still, of. It was not. It was hilarious. It died. Uh, what just, about was what about Young Person's Guide to U.S. History? Did you? Because I'm pretty like, sure I showed like that to you. One episode. No, it wasn't one episode. It was two episodes, but they did it all at once. So they they showed all the content back to back one night, and it was before the presidential election night. I right, think, if right. I remember, Thomas Jefferson, Ben Franklin. Uh, Hamilton, Alexander Hamilton, and I think at one point they had Aaron Burr that came on there or something. That was that was pretty funny, but I wouldn't call that as cringe as cringe worthy as something like uh, oh man, what's the guy that you, you Franklin? You smell like whiskey and sperm. <laughs> now, yes, General Washington. <laughs> that was great. What the the guy? I can't think of his name right now. He does he does the uh, the talk show where he basically tortures people. Eric Andre. Yeah, Eric Andre. Yeah, I can't get behind. He does that. the talk show where he brings on great guests and gives them fantastic content. Fuck you. He tortures them. Sure. He a little bit tortures them. Yeah. Even if people know what they're getting into, he just hypes it to the point where we're going to torture them even more. Yeah. I love it when he pulls out a gun and just starts shooting people on set. Oh, man. That's God. great. See, that's not funny to me. It is hilarious. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. So let me get this straight. You're one of those people that finds shootings not funny, huh? Yeah. You yeah. see, so, you have remorse. You feel sorry <laughs> for the person. You have empathy for their families. It's I gotcha. Fascinating. Like I don't know where that comedy, because it seems like comedy is developed with the culture around it. Sure. What culture created that type of comedy for that generation? Andy Kaufman. Yeah, I mean, if you want a serious shoot answer, Andy Kaufman. I can see that. I can see it coming from him because he, no one else was doing it when he did it. But well. Yes, no. I mean, I think there's there's a rule that I'm trying to live by here. Somebody else may have been the first, but they're not the only one. Gotcha. You know, and and that's there's if you and we're at a stage now where if you can think it, somebody's probably already done it, whether right. you realize it or not. Maybe they didn't do it on a mass scale, and then you could even take that kind of stuff back to like the Three Stooges. You know, these guys were sticking each other in the eye, calling each other idiots, hitting one another on the head with like hammers and stuff. Yeah. Which I can only imagine it had to have some level of influence on the Home Alone movies, maybe or maybe not, maybe not intentionally, because yeah. and and then obviously the Home Alone movies created what Saw. <laughs> <laughs> what? Without Home Alone, there'd be no Saw. Wow, that escalated. Quickly. Well, wrap your brain around it for a second. There, there's theories on the internet that Jigsaw is Kevin from Home Alone, oh, all grown up. Now, what? Yes, 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 and yes. <clears throat> oh, my God. Look at the traps that Kevin is doing in Home Alone. They would murder somebody. He's, like, setting their heads on fire with torches. They're falling on beds of spikes. They're, they're getting hit in the face with anvils and shit like that. And then guess what? Look at Saw. They're falling into beds of like hypodermic heroin infested needles. They're falling into glass pits. They're getting thrown into furnaces. You know, so yes, there's some parallels with the Saw movies and Home Alone. It's just one was family entertainment and the other one was murder. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Family entertainment. And the other one was murder. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my God. But seriously, there's some parallels. But no, I think if you look at the inside joke kind of comedy, yeah. Andy Kaufman was one of the pioneers yeah. of that. Yeah, I can I can see that that direct correlation in people. Because oh, I get what you're saying, too. He wasn't necessarily the only one, but he was the one that put it on TV. He was the one that was getting notoriety. Well, what I think really got Andy over was his wrestling stuff. And yeah. if you go watch Andy Kaufman in the wrestling ring with Jerry the King Lawler, and then what they did on David Letterman after, oh my God, man, that shit's tip top, man. That is some tip top stuff. And I saw this uh, bit that he was doing where he was doing like a talk show, but he had his desk at like towered above all of the guests. Like he's sitting like 10 feet in the air, like staring down on them, like some kind of judge in some, you know, apocalyptic society, you know, giving out all these tyrannical laws on people. And he brings his ex-wife on there. 
and they've supposedly, you know, the amicably split and all this, but then they literally keep like jabbing at one another about the shitty marriage that they had or something like that. Hmm. And they keep going back and forth and then it just turns into an all out argument between the two, like a little lover's quarrel. And shit like that I think's great because obviously they contrived that. Right. But the way they sold it and that's the cool thing about him, man. The way he sold it, you couldn't really tell if Andy was serious yeah. or he was joking, man. Yeah. That, yeah. And that's what I like to do. I like to just sell it that way. So, like, with the phone call shit, you know, and, and sure, man, I mean, I could say that Andy Kaufman is a massive influence for me, but then there's plenty of other people, too. Longmont Potion Castle, uh, the Phone Jacker, which is K. Van Novak and became Face Jacker. And he came out with something in the last year, too. Um, it's Britain Today Tonight. It's like a fake news thing. Say it again? Br- I believe it's called Britain Today, Today Tonight. Tonight. Yeah, I'm not familiar with it. Britain Today it's Tonight. It's on Dead Parrot, and it's not getting a lot of views. And it came out, I know, within probably like the last 10 months. And so it's been out for a little bit. And I haven't watched it in its totality. But what I've seen, I would put it on level with The Onion, gotcha. but British. Gotcha. And much like the Face Jacker stuff, the third season of Phone Jacker that became Face Jacker, right. where he was just on the street and masks and stuff like that and doing things, you know, and creating all these characters that he'd created on the phone that he's just bringing to life. I love K. Van Novak. He's on What We Do in the Shadows. Right. He's Nandor. Right. Which I think is funny. That uh, You think it's funny that he's Nandor or you think he's funny as Nandor? Both. Because <laughs> okay. he started out being like... Uh, he was doing typecasting stuff yeah. where he was always having to play like a terrorist. Yeah, yeah. He made a joke about that on a talk show one night. Yeah. And he got into the business by imitating Kevin Spacey, I think. Yeah, he talked his way into a... He talked Kevin Spacey's Spacey. way into a major <laughs> role is, is what that was. But yeah, so I promise a story. So I'll give you a story, all right? You asked a Cheeto You've thing teacher, before oh I forget, God. right? Yeah. It's a true story. So I'm in line at Target one night. Or afternoon or something like that anyway. Irrelevant. Dark and stormy night. Dark and stormy night, right? And I'm standing there, and there's this little kid, like, trying to get my attention, but I don't realize it. They're in front of me in line, and this kid's just going berserk trying to get my attention and get me to look at this kid. Well, my wife says, this kid's trying to get your attention. I, I look down, I see this kid, like, grinning ear to ear at me, and is, like, waving her hands around. She's probably, I don't know, two. Mm-hmm. And so this kid's got all this orange shit all over her face, just all over it. And so I thought the kid had probably been eating like Cheetos or crackers or something, you know. And so I'm trying to be nice. And I go, well, hey there, little lady. I said, I didn't mean to ignore you. I apologize. I said, what you been doing there? You just been uh, eating some Cheetos or what? And her mom goes, nope, that's rosacea or eczema or eczema. One, of the, one of the two, eczema. you know, one of the two. And I go, huh? Well, I'll be damned. <laughs> and I didn't know what else to say. Be- I know I felt like an asshole, but at the same time, I was kind of like, well, now, hold on a minute, Mom. Like, how was I supposed to know? I mean, you can't really get too mad at me for this. You called me, man. The kid did get my attention. Now, granted, <laughs> yeah. in fairness, that young lady had no clue what she was signing up for. <laughs> but I didn't either. I didn't either. That's why you don't do shit cold. That's why we got to stop doing this goddamn podcast cold. We got to quit doing it live. We need to stop fucking it and doing it live. And we need to start recording it and doing it contrived. That's the way. If That's the only way I'm ever going to put out good content and get more than three viewers. <laughs> or we need to bring on special guests or something. I don't know. People, Somebody that people give a fuck about, I guess. Oh, man. We should probably put in a call. What gonna, do you think? Who are you going to call? Assholes. Of course. Yeah, it's a bar in Cincinnati. (laughs) (laughs) Hemicron Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service. This is David. I'm going to help you. Hello, Governor. How you doing today? Doing good. I was calling about the advertisement that you had there in the paper. Say that one more time. The advertisement that you put in the paper there. Uh, I don't know what that one is. Yeah, it was about the coupons there, mate. What's that? The coupons there, mate. There's okay. a bunch of static in the background there, player. I can barely hear you. Yeah, it's pretty loud out here. Yeah, do you make, maybe you could get to a quieter space there. What kind of coupons? 
Yeah, mate. It was the one there that I don't want to get the bopsy on the whoop whoop, you know. I don't want to get trampled by piglets here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, there, mate. So what time should I come on by there on account of the advertisement? Uh, any time. We're open till 2. Till 2 p.m. there. 1,400 yes. hours, you say? Yes. Well, look there. Who should I be asking for now? Uh, anybody will be able to help you out. Well, I don't want to come up there now. I don't want to be putting the banger on the wop wop. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I've got an Oldsmobile. Okay. What yes. Year? Is that a problem for you? Not a problem at all. It's a 74. Should be able to help you out on that. Yeah, Mike. Yeah, so what time? What time is the appointment there? Uh, we don't have any appointments. It's first come, first serve, but we're open till two. Well, mate, I've got the coupon from the advertisement. Yeah, that's not a problem. Yes, it's the one you put out there, there. Yeah. We're so I'll be on by there. I'll be having the bells on there, whistle boy. Sounds good. All right, you blokes. All right, See you, you shortly. All right. So I don't want to put the bopsy on the whoop whoop. What do you think? I'll put the bells on you, whistleblower. Whistle boy. Oh, whistle boy. My yeah, bad. I don't know what that means. I just made shit up in, in British. But she, he was very agreeable. He seems like an agreeable fella. He understood exactly what you were saying. Should I call him back? <laughs> Ask him about his aluminum cans. Yeah, well. <laughs> that's, coincidentally, that's what um, Wolverine's claws are made out of. Aluminium. <laughs> Isn't that correct? Yeah. There's a lot of comic book people out there that are going, That's not correct! It's Admantium! <laughs> Never calling Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service. This is David. I'm going to help you. David, I just called up there. I forgot to get the address, you posh knob. Where, where are you located at? Uh, we are located on the service road right next to McDonald's and Chick-fil-A. Uh, what's the address, Mr. Robert? 315 215 315 North Service Road East. All right, you slag. I'll be there by in the, about an hour and a half there. That'll work. Sounds good. Right, thank you, sir. Bangers and mash. Bangers and mash. So help me out here. Is bangers and mash sausage and mashed potatoes? I have no idea. I just assumed you made it up. No, that's a real thing. And by the way, slag and posh knob are insults and <laughs> British slang, I believe. Bangers and mash, also known as sausage and mash, is a traditional dish of Great Britain comprised sausage served with mashed potatoes. I I took a shot in the I took a piss in the wind and it didn't hit me in the face. Would you look at that? <laughs> So y'all just agreed on lunch? I think we did. <laughs> so me and this David up there at uh, Speedy got a lunch date. You know, it's interesting, though, that Robbie's up there. Maybe I should have called his Sebastian. <laughs> I got snake pits in now that I can install for you. I'll come by with a jackhammer and bust up your parking lot, and I'll put a snake pit in. Maybe spikes in there, too, and kerosene. <laughs> so, I make a hundred dollars an hour. It just gets more and more and more dangerous with this guy's um, installs. We'll get magma trenches. We're gonna have claymores. I'm gonna put mercury in your water table. <laughs> <laughs> that way, your kids are born with third eyes. <laughs> there you go. You owe me fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars now with interest is twenty six eighty two. You're wasting my time. You're wasting my time, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> so there you go. Well, anyway, we know that they're at least tolerant of the British up there, but they're not tolerant of soft-spoken security guards. <laughs> and I'll tell you one thing, too. If you want 10% off on your bangers and mash or your bobsy on the whoop-whoop, go on down to that oil change place and mention this ad. Okay. We'll do it live.